Welcome to the Freshman Symposium class, Life Questions in the Catholic Intellectual Tradition. I'm Michael Galligan Stirl. I'm the president of the Association of Catholic Colleges and Universities in Washington, D.C., and I am your guest lecturer for this PowerPoint presentation. If you'd like to uh, tweet, uh, there's the information you need. What I hope you get by the end of this uh, time together, which should be about 40 minutes, uh, is the recognition of two very important goals. First, what are life's big questions? How do they fit into your life? And secondly, how can the Catholic intellectual tradition or wisdom from the ages help you answer your own personal questions that you are encountering? The way this presentation is going to unfold is that there's going to be four parts. We're going to ask, why do you even care about the Catholic intellectual tradition and how can life's questions help you and inform your learning about Catholic intellectual tradition? Second, what is it? Third, how can you use it? And fourth, who are the people that are using it right now in the United States? You've decided to come to college you have chosen to learn an academic area and also during your time in school examine life. Socrates says the unexamined life is not worth living. You've chosen to come at life differently. You are looking to make your life better, more fulfilled by learning and by forming good habits that will help you live a happier life. Simon Sinek, who does a series of TED Talks, and you can easily find that by going to your Google machine, says that the most important way to be grounded and live a happy life and succeed in business is by knowing your personal why. Why do you get up in the morning? Why do you love who you love? Why do you care about what you care about? He calls it the golden circle, and he says it's the simplest idea in the world. That is, why, how, what, and who help to frame and shape how we proceed in life. Some organizational leaders can answer the question, what, can answer the question how, but few people take time to figure out their why in life. So I ask you, what are some of your why questions? Why have you come to St. Thomas? Why are you pursuing the degree you're pursuing? Why are you making the choices you're making in your life this day? Many people know the what or the how but very, very few people focus on the why. What is your cause? What is your belief? Why do you get out of bed in the morning? Simon Sinek says, as a result, many people go from the outside in instead of the inside out. That is, they answer the question what? They ask the question how? but they don't get to why. And therefore, it's very hard to stay grounded. But inspired leaders and people of balance who actually lead inspired organizations, regardless of their size or industry, work from the inside out. That is, they are grounded, they know their why, and they move forward out of a posture of authenticity. You can see by the diagram on the screen that it's important to know how you are going to proceed by good study habits, by having a good cohort of friends, by time managing well. Very important. As it's going to be important to be successful on what it is you're going to study. What are you going to do when you graduate? But these are questions that will unfold over your lifetime. Just as important is why are you proceeding the way you're proceeding? 
Why do you want to be here? Who do you love? And what is your purpose in life? Sharon Dolez Parks has written a book called Big Questions, Worthy Dreams. In that, she says, young adults today to have a meaningful and satisfying life need to ask, who am I? What is my purpose in life? Why do I exist? How do I want to live my life? And she says the best way for young adults to answer these questions is to ask their mentors, mentors that they will meet during the college years, during the young adult years. Some of them will be college professors. Some of them will be upper class students. Some of those will be your roommates. Some of those will be the people that you love. Some will be family. These mentors in your life will help you answer your big questions and help you shape your worthy dream. In addition to these mentors, there's also a large body of information that exists. Might I call it wisdom literature that's been written for the last 2,000 years by people who had the same questions you had. They are people that have been part of the Catholic Church community. They have have searched through questions like you have and lived a life like you are now living and they have written either books, papers, or they have created art that captures for them some of the same answers to questions you have found in your life. There are others who have also put together answers to these significant questions. Questions like, what is good? What is true? What is beautiful? These three questions are not questions that come from the Christian, Catholic, or religious community, regardless of the denomination or faith belief system. These three questions are what are called transcendental values. The good, the true, the beautiful. These questions that you see on the screen precede the birth of Jesus. That is, they were part of what was called pre-Socratic philosophy. In short, they are not religious concepts. Rather, they are human concepts that the Catholic Church and others of religious beliefs have come to believe to be helpful in, in finding a meaningful life. By having good answers to these three questions, people can become centered, they can become them be their best selves. They can be in love relations more easily. They can be more successful in the marketplace. In today's culture, these values, true, good, and beautiful, are not held up in as high esteem as they once were. And there are many people in today's society, both religious people and those not of religion, who would choose not to do the good, the true, or the beautiful, but instead choose spin, utility, and personal preference. What do I mean? Well, sometimes you really want the truth, and you read a newspaper, or you listen to news, or you listen to someone tell a story like a parent or a grandparent or a godparent, and you know full well that they are not giving you the truth. They are spinning the facts to be pointed in a direction of their preference. This does not enable a person to be grounded 
and whole and authentic. And so with the good, all of us need to discover what is the good life? How should you treat other people? What is the ethical choice to make? And when people do that, they live a more fulfilled life. In today's world, people aren't as convicted and committed to the good as they are to the utility or the use of another person. That is, they don't want to really focus on what's the best for that other person, but rather, how could this person be useful to me or how could they be of utility in my relations with them or in society rather than being of worth on their own instead of simply being a cog in a machine. And lastly, all of us have had an experience somewhere in our life by listening to music, seeing a piece of art, watching a sunset, communing with nature, being involved in an athletic competition where the beautiful, the majestic, the special is enriching to watch and behold. That experience of the beautiful is a transcendental value. This is very different in than uh, what is sometimes identified in today's world as a personal preference. That is, well, you may think that, but I think this. In fact, there are things that are beautiful and aren't just a matter of, quote, personal preference. That is, for the majority of people, and I'm talking here nine out of ten people, that witness a certain sunset, they would say, uh, that is really beautiful, or that piano piece, or that piece of art, or that athletic skill is really something beautiful to behold. And so these transcendental values help guide a person's life going forward. So why would you as a as a student beginning at St. Thomas University want to ask a question like why at this early stage in your first three four weeks of school because getting a good answer to why are you here what is your mission what is the direction you're heading why do you love who cares about you what is good what is true? What is beautiful? Learning how to ask these very important questions will set a path for your life that will lead to enrichment and success. Next, we focused on what. What is the Catholic intellectual tradition and how can it help you answer life's questions? <clears throat> the best way to understand this is to pull apart three, the three words, Catholic, intellectual, and tradition, and treat them separately. And so I'm going to quickly summarize these three items to help you better grasp what we mean by the Catholic intellectual tradition. So first, what does it mean to be Catholic? Well, first and foremost, a Catholic is a person who follows Christian, the way of Jesus, and lives that way of Jesus in a certain mindset or pattern as compared to other Christians who are also following Jesus, living copying, emulating his life in a little different direction. For Catholics, we value three things very, very highly in the Christian life. These are what I might call our three aces in our deck of cards of the Christian um, portfolio. The three words that 
capture this way of proceeding are sacramentality, mediation, and communion. By sacramentality, the Catholic believer understands that God created all things and that within those creations in the world, a person can see a part of the great glory of God. All the world is filled with the greatness of God. That phrase captures sacramentality. So the students in your class, the students on campus, are an image of God. The earth, that sunset, that beautiful piano piece that was just played. Everything of creation in part is a manifestation or a sacrament or a visible sign of the invisible love that God gives to the human person. Catholics value this very, very highly because they believe that a glass is half full more than a glass is half empty. That is, that, it, that God has created everything around us and we are blessed to be living and enjoying what is in front of us. Second, that these things that are out there in the world, people, places, and things, that we can connect with God through them by doing good works, by interacting with them, by seeing grace around us in what they do, that the material, the human, and the finite are vehicles in which God acts to make a difference in the world. That is, they mediate the wonder of God to the human person. And third, the Catholic believes that we as a human race are in this together. It isn't simply my life that matters. It's our life that matters. It isn't simply my goal to love other people and live a, a good life and ultimately reach heaven, the afterlife, because of the life I lived, but rather the human person in a Catholic worldview commits themselves to the common good, to making all of the world around us better, and to, to in, bring with us into the love relationship with God our friends, our people around us. Now, the primary way we do this is through our actions that are actions of love. We lead with action more than we lead with words. St. Francis says, we, we evangelize others, and when necessary, we use words, which means that it is our life that should speak to others in a loving way more than words are needed to show who God is. <clears throat> So we take from these three values, sacramentality, mediation, and communion, a Catholic worldview or a way of seeing things. Okay? It's a distinctive perception of reality. Now, Pope Francis says that this way of living a full life, this way of being embraced in the sacramental mediation communion way of living is lived well when the good, the true, and the beautiful, these transcendental values that preceded Christianity, are held up in an integrative way. And your time here at St. At Thomas is meant to, to expose you and allow you to wrestle with the good, the true, and the beautiful. So in Pope Francis's words, if something is true, it is good and beautiful. 
If it is beautiful, then it is also good and true. And if it is good, life-giving, then it is true and it is beautiful. And together, these elements enable us, you and me, and Pope Francis, to grow and to love life. Even when we may not be well, even when things aren't going our way, that there are problems. Because we know in the midst of the good, the true, and the beautiful, in a Catholic worldview, God is present and alive and will carry us forward. Second, to be intellectual. <clears throat> that is, you have chosen to be at a university. And in the words of John Henry Cardinal Newman, who helped Catholic universities understand their goal in life, he calls the university a place where inquiry is pushed forward and discoveries verified and perfected. And listen to this next phrase. And rashness, that is people that aren't being good, true, and beautiful, people who have crazy ideas, we need to render them or call them out and say, you know, that's innocuous. And we have to expose error and say, you know, you're spinning that truth. The truth is really this. And through the collision of mind with mind and knowledge with knowledge, a university and the intellect is refurbished and reborn and created in a brilliant way. Some of you probably don't know this, but the church has been a longtime advocate and supporter of colleges. In fact, the Catholic Church founded the first universities. Bologna, Paris, Oxford, Cambridge. All of these schools, the very first universities in the world, were founded by the Catholic community because we believed that God is embedded, is part and parcel of knowledge and reason and faith and truth and good and beauty. And the more we can expose people to those intellectual concepts, the better their lives will be. And so the Catholic community very early founded these universities and they invited everyone to attend, not just folks that were Catholic, not just folks that were Christian, but folks that did not believe, people that were of other religions, joined with us in the pursuit of knowledge and the intellectual. And the church saw that as part and parcel what we needed to do because we were Catholic. In the United States, some of the schools that the Catholic community founded that are the oldest schools are the four on the screen. We believe, that is, the Catholic community believes, and John Paul II, who wrote the document Ex Cordia Ecclesiae on what does it mean to be a Catholic university, says it is an honor and responsibility of a Catholic university to consecrate itself without reserve to the free search for the truth about nature, man, and God. Now, this is very important because within this document, Ex Cordia Ecclesiae, John Paul II is very clear that all people, not Catholics, all people are called to join with us in the search for truth and that we have founded our universities not for Catholics but for all people so that they can learn about nature, man, and God and to put the good, the true, and the beautiful together in the way that they would like their life to be organized and constructed. And so by being at a Catholic university, we want you to know that there is no reserve on the free search for truth, nature, man, and God. The only constraints are that we treat the people around us with great respect and civility in our interactions with them. Last, tradition. Well, tradition is in part treasures, written books, 
that have been studied and handed on. Yes, it is a written documentation, might we say, libraries. <clears throat> but it is not just written text or musical text or arts and customs, but it's really a whole way of thinking and expressing and acting. There's a whole treasury of classics that are out there past just theological or philosophical documents. All knowledge is part and parcel of the treasury of the Catholic intellectual tradition. And there have been great writers, Augustine, Gregory the Great, and others that are on the screen that have wrestled with questions just like your questions. Why do I exist? Where is God? Is there a God? Does God work through people? How does sin play in the world? What is suffering? How do you find the good life? These are questions that people have written about and searched about just like you're doing in your life. And so being at St. Thomas, in part, we want you to be connected to that wisdom and to learn from them the best you can. And we want you to learn from any wisdom that you find that you can bring forward to answer your questions. And that is part of what we call our method. Method that has been honed over 2,000 years that's born of experience, prayer, action, and most importantly, critical reflection. You're going to be asked at St. Thomas to write many, many critical reflection papers. And these critical reflection papers need to be grounded in truth, grounded in research, and your best thinking, not what you happen to think today, but rather taking time to really analyze what do you believe? What do you think? How does that match with the great thinkers of the world that have preceded you? And and what do those great thinkers have to say about your questions? And how does your answer either match or differentiate itself from those great thinkers? In, in a way, you are choosing to be engaged in a 2,000-year conversation between the church and the world, between a community of believers and the culture. You are now part of the Catholic intellectual tradition by sharing your critical reflection and thoughts, as well as your professor, as well as your mentors, as well as the great books that are in the library, the language and the knowledge you will learn through computers, by researching what's online with the data that's there. All of this comes to bear in your discernment and critical reflection on what is important for your life. In a way, your time here is our attempt to pass on the great treasure of the centuries. That is, a Catholic university serves as the steward of this ongoing conversation, and we commit ourselves with you and the next generation to advance knowledge through readings and texts. So what is the Catholic intellectual tradition? It's in part great writers. It's in part a great method. It is in part a conversation. And you are now part of that conversation and we're asking you to critically reflect on your thinking as compared to the thinking and the wisdom of 2,000 years of deep thinkers as well.